The story begins in the muddy livestock raising town of Valentine, New Hanover. I had just turned in a hunting haul to the local butcher for a quick buck or two. Being a hunter is more profitable than being an outlaw just yet, but I'm hoping that'll change when the summer update rolls around sometime this winter. It was time for me to collect a debt from a local business owner. This fella runs a hotel on one of my properties, so he's got to pay his rent. We go through this every week. It's an agreement. This week he wasn't doing so good, so I worked with him. And we haggled. And he got off with paying nothing more than 12 cents. And his wedding ring. He was looking real tired, and I figured he could use a nap. So I went ahead and knocked him out and put him to sleep. On my way out of town, this guy working on a wagon looked at me real reckless. I didn't much like it, and I got pretty worked up about it. I asked him what his problem was and he ignored me, so I got even more worked up. So I trust him on up and asked him again, what the hell are you looking at, partner? That's when some witness decided they want to run to the law and talk about what they seen. Well, if there's one thing I hate more than a sideways eye, it's a snitch. So I threw that jerk on the ground and said after him. I ran in there and seen it was a lady. But that don't make no difference to me. A snitch is a snitch. So I wrangled her. And things got out of hand. Apparently the law ain't too keen on fellers tuning up the local folk. So I shot at him. Cause I ain't too keen on them neither. I was on my way to the cabin in Cumberland to put two in the back of her head on the account of her snitching and such. But the law was on my trail. Then it occurred to me. If there's one thing I hate more than a snitch, it's a cop. So I exchanged hostages, and in a seldom instance of compassion and mercy, I let that whore live to snitch another day. Naturally, them other coppers were hell-bound on saving their friend, and a big shootout chase ensued. The guy I had tied up was getting more and more nervous by the minute. Eventually, we came to a crossroad, and he asked me where I was taking him, and I said, Mister? We're going to the Bakus Bridge. I want to see if pigs can fly. And it was what happened on that bridge that is the reason why to this day, folks still utter the name Combat Garrett with a trembling voice. I knew them cops were coming, and I knew they wouldn't stop coming until I was dead, or until all of them were. So I made my stand. I dug in. They started coming, and I started shooting. Bullet by bullet, I cocked that lever and dropped them cops. Then they sent hounds after me. Needless to say, them dogs were no match for my Model 1873 Winchester repeating rifle. And neither were them cops nor their horses. And when the smoke cleared, I seen just one cop, brazen and brave, running across that bridge, wielding nothing but a knife and I admired his grit, but that didn't change nothing. I tied him up, and I told him I guess today we're gonna be making two pigs fly. I took advantage of a break in the fighting to run his pockets, and then I did what I come to do. A miscalculation on my end meant that he didn't fall as far as I planned on. Oops, but that's okay. The second guy did and his scream echoed through the canyon all the way down. It felt good to settle a score, I mean. More cops were coming. Not enough to keep me pinned down, so I knew I could leave on the other side of the bridge whenever I wanted. But not before I did some more killing. Another brave lawman charged me on horseback, but I put the rope on him. I figured I'd throw him off this bridge in front of his friends and brothers, and I did just that. The last living cop was forced to watch in horror as his friend plummeted to his death right before his very eyes. That's when I started hollering at him. I says, My name's Combat Garrett. I'm the leader of the Long Riders Gang. We're the griefinest griefers this side of West Elizabeth, and coming after me is going to bring one thing and one thing only, and that's death. I fired a warning shot in the air as he cowered off, and then I took my leave. I rode onto that bridge hunted and on the run, and I left it a feared legend. And now the standoff at Baku's Bridge is a story folk tell around campfires and the like. But I still roam these parts. 
many men have come after me either to claim my bounty or claim revenge and just that many men are dead I'm here and they're not I'm still causing trouble I ain't done killing and this story ain't over yet